Well, welcome to Be Inspired Today. I am your host, Cliff Wright, and I have the honor today to introduce a very dear sister. She is Minister Elois Watson. She is an instructor for Spirit Food Children's Center of Biblical Instruction, among many things. She uh, is such a, a co-laborer with God. That's, that's how I, I describe her. We met about 2005, around that time frame, and we've served in street uh, witnessing together, going out knocking on doors and sharing the love of Jesus Christ with people. And uh, it was such a wonderful experience. And recently the Lord uh, reconnected us after a number of years and I was inspired to have her on the show. And I believe that she is going to share some uh, part of her story that's going to help you to be inspired to hold on to positive expectations. Welcome to the show, Elois. Well, thank you for having me, Minister Cliff, my brother, my awesome brother, mighty man of valor, mighty man of God. It is a blessing to be able to come on and just spend time fellowshipping with you around the word and the goodness of God and just seeing what the Lord wants to share amongst and with the people this today. So thank awesome. you for this opportunity. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you know, your, your resume, if you want to call it a resume is so powerful. I mean, you, you started out at uh Chris Shaw Christian centers, ministry training Institute uh, under Dr. Frederick Casey Price, uh, Apostle Price, and he's gone on to be uh, gone on to glory, and he definitely made an impact in your life and made an impact in my life and so many others. Tell us about that experience uh, going to uh, the that that institute. Well, actually, I started as a member in 1983 at Crenshaw Christian Center. I rededicated my life to the Lord. I actually got saved probably about 20 years prior to that at a Billy Graham crusade at the Coliseum. And wow. I'll never forget, forget hearing him say, come as you are, just as you are. The song being played and going, walking down those steps and going on the ground with the multitudes and asking Jesus into my heart as a teenager. So then transitioning over to around 83, I started going to Crenshaw. Then we moved over to what's now called the Faith Dome. But at that time, we were uh, in the main auditorium. We didn't go into the Faith Dome until 1990. But I received uh, the infilling of the Holy Spirit there. And then I, I had this desire, actually from the time that I was nine years old, to be uh, a missionary and they had an opportunity even if you weren't going to be what was called a personal counselor when people receive Jesus doing the invitation at church mm -hmm. and they go back and uh, you sit one-on-one -on -one with the counselor ladies with ladies and men with men and you share with them the process of asking Jesus into their heart what they've done if they have any questions and then if they want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So I learned how to do that in 1985. The first person I ministered to was a parking lot attendant. And I was so excited when he says, yes, I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. So I started ministering then. And then the Lord directed me sometime later that when I minister salvation to someone, never ask if they're saved, never ask if they know Jesus, never ask if they're born again. He says, you ask them, if they die tonight, do they know where they'll spend eternity? And mm -hmm. from that question, they should be able to answer based on Romans chapter 10, verses nine and 10, that they have believed in their heart and confessed with their mouth that Jesus died on the cross for their sins. 
And so that's how the Lord taught me years ago to minister salvation. And um, taking it from there, I started in almost the late 90s attending what was then called the Ministry Training Institute at Crenshaw Christian Center. So I did the two-year program. I was certified as a minister. And then I was licensed as a minister by Crenshaw. And I started going on the mission field probably around 2000. My first missions trip was to Mexico. And I did that first trip to Mexico, then I did one to the Dominican Republic. And actually, I've gone back to Mexico. I've gone to the Dominican Republic eight times. I've gone to Nicaragua. I've gone to Peru, which we normally in English say Peru. I've gone to Cuba. In English, we say Cuba. I've wow. gone to Germany. I've gone. Where else have I gone? It seems like I'm missing one of the countries. But anyway, <laughs> and I've, I've done. You probably left out a few countries. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and you know, I I do local outreach, and I'll say anywhere I go is a mission field. <laughs> so, but. Well, that's you know how I got to know you, and incidentally, I rededicated my life to the Lord around that same time, 85, uh, at Crenshaw Christian Center. And I remember being in that room and someone uh, sharing uh, the gospel with me and, and being filled with the Holy Spirit. And then I came back a second time to get filled with the Holy Spirit, because at, at that time I wasn't fully ready to be, you know, baptized with the Holy Spirit, but I'm so glad that I did. And so that just brings back uh, wonderful uh, memories. And, and again, you and I met at Zoe Christian Fellowship, uh, going on knocking, knocking on doors Yes. Uh, on Saturday mornings. I remember that very well. And uh, we had some wonderful times. Uh, talk about that a little bit. Well, you know, they call that highways and byways, being out about the father's business. And I would encourage anyone that's listening you know, once you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you want to tell others. You want to tell them about the change that he's made in your life. And you know how sometimes people may watch maybe a movie or something and they want to post on Facebook, oh, you should watch this and you should go and, and make sure you catch this or whatever it is. Well, that's what we, we as the body of Christ should be. We should be about it. being excited to be ministers of reconciliation and and just, I have a dear friend, he refers to it as emptying hell and filling up God's kingdom. And wow. so for Love us, it. that should be our total lifestyle. You know, uh, the great commission that Jesus has given us where he says for us to go into all the world, that's what we should be so mindful of doing is going into all the world and winning the loss. And so I just like to say, you know, when we would go out and street witness, as you said, we'd knock on the doors and, you know, people would so many times open the door and be ready to receive the Lord. And for me, that was just so exciting for us to be able to do that. And uh, you know, Jesus himself, he says he came to seek and to save that which was lost. So I can, you know, it, I, it's my life, my passion. You know, anyone who knows me knows I'm about winning the loss to the point that I've had people tell me, they say, oh, Lois, you're anointed for that. And, you know, the Lord told me many years ago, he says, you know, there's nothing special about you. You're just willing to do it. And, wow. I, and I tell people, I say, no, I'm not, because sometimes that can be an excuse for them not to go and win the loss. And I don't want anyone to ever think that God doesn't want to use them that way. Sometimes, you know, when people tell you no, if you're ministering to them, don't take it personally. They're not saying no to you. They're saying no to the Lord. 
And we want to be what he's called us. We want to be wise soul winners. That's in Proverbs uh, 11, verse 30. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, be about the Father's business. He said to go. That's in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20, and Mark chapter 16, verses 15 to 18. You've got a mandate, all of us listening. <laughs> We've got a mandate, you know. And as soon as we get the, the lost into the kingdom, or at least they have an opportunity to hear, Jesus will come back. I'm looking up. I'm like, come, Lord Jesus, come. <laughs> so anyway, I, I can go on and on and on. So, you know. That's, that's wonderful. Wonderful. You have a lot uh, to share. One of the things I'd like for you to share, uh, Minister Lois, is what do you think uh, prompted your heart? Where did, where did that passion come from? you know, uh, ministering the gospel to the lost. You know, when I was nine years old, I remember so vividly one of my parents, their friend, referred to me as a little missionary. But the way it was said then, it was kind of like, it wasn't a form of edification. It was like, you're different. And mm. I kind of had reservations because as a nine-year-old and I was raised in a denominational church where, you know, we weren't really, uh, well, uh, it was traditional. The pastor read maybe two or three verses from the Bible. No one brought a Bible to church. And then he preached for about 15, 20 minutes. And I won't name the denomination. It's, it's a rather large denomination. And so I didn't have the real understanding of what a missionary was until I guess in my late teens. And then once I received the Lord, that passion in me is like, you know, sometimes people, they're, they're trying to find out, well, why was I born? What was I born to do? I can say a thousand percent, I was born to minister salvation to the lost and wow. to teach the word of God. And so I just, it's such a hunger. It's so, you know, now that we, I call it being safe at home since last March because of the pandemic, you know, we were at home. But, you know, we had to make phone calls. Sometimes you had to call maybe the phone company, your cell phone company, a utility company, or maybe a credit card or whatever. And so I've learned so fortunately that when I'm speaking to someone, when we finish the conversation, I always say, uh, I have one more question. And we think you're going to ask something related to the business or whatever. And so I say, now, if you die tonight, do you know where you're going to spend eternity? And no. I get so many answers. I get answers like, well, I think I'm going to heaven. And I kind of like that one because then it gives me the opportunity to say, well, what makes you think you're going to heaven if I may ask? And then I'll get the, the classic. Oh, I've been a good person. I do this and I do that. And I get sometimes a, a litany of what all they've done. And I'll say, you know what? That's really nice, but it's not a requirement. According to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 89, Jesus is a free gift. You don't have to work your way into heaven. You just by faith believe. And they're like, really? And I'll say, yes. Or... Hmm. I'll get some of them that say, well, I don't know, and I don't care. And I'll say, but do you know eternity's forever? And then after a period of time, I do what I call locate, locate, locate. I locate where they are with the Lord. And then mm -hmm. I share, you know, about, again, Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. And I may get into, I let them go, okay, we're a three-part being. You can see your body. I said, but you have a spirit, the real man on the inside. And then you have a soul, which is your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect, and where you make your decisions. And I say, at the time of death, 
the spirit and the soul leave the body and they either ascend or they descend. Mm -hmm. And they say, oh, and then when they get that understanding, and then I share, you know, that Jesus came and died on the cross for our sins and God raised him from the dead. It's really the resurrection. And we celebrate it and refer to it as Easter Sunday. I said, now that's part one. So do you believe Jesus came and died on the cross for your sins? And they'll say, oh, yeah, I believe that. And then I say, well, that's part one. Part two is saying that as a prayer. It takes about 20 seconds. I can lead you in the prayer. And then you'll know, like we can say right now, whatever the time is and the date, that if anybody ever asks you, do you know where you're going to spend eternity? You can say yes, because Jesus is in your heart. And then I tell them too. I said, then when you do that, your name is written in a special book. It's called the Lamb's Book of Life. And when right. you get to heaven, they check and they see your name is in there and they say, come on in. And I get all excited, just like you hear me now. <laughs> You know what? Your passion exudes. It exudes. It, it comes across so powerfully, Minister Lois. Uh, what I'd like to do, if if someone's listening right now, would you mind uh, sharing? You know how to lead them into salvation. Now, I believe in my spirit that someone is listening right at this moment, and that question of where would they spend eternity is 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 uh, on their heart. Amen. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. Well, to all of you, if you're not 100% sure where you're going to spend eternity, and see, be mindful. I'm not talking about going to church every Sunday. I'm not talking about praying every night. I'm not talking about doing good work. You could give your whole paycheck away. But if you have not asked Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior, According to Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that says, if you should believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, it says you'll be saved. See, I'm not even talking about, um, if you could say, the doing the good works. Again, as I said earlier, by faith you receive Jesus. It says not by works. You do not work your way into heaven. And God forbid you think you get a do-over. Once you're gone from here, you've already made the decision where you're going to spend eternity. There is no purgatory. Nobody's going to pray you out. You are dead when you die. Okay? Your spirit and your soul are either going to ascend or descend. You have the choice now to ask Jesus into your heart. He came and died a horrible death for us. He took 39 stripes on his back so that we could have healing now. And that's another subject later on we could probably talk about or another time I should say. Absolutely, absolutely. But he died for you, just for you. If you were the only one here on earth, Jesus would have died just for you. That's how much his love is for us. So now, if you have never asked Jesus into you, and I'm not talking about baptism either. See, baptism is an outward showing of an inward change. You get mm -hmm. baptized after you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. So you know, and you know that you know, it's like, I'm not sure if I've ever done that. If you're not sure, and you know you're not sure, or you definitely know you've never asked Jesus into your heart, just bow your head right now. Yes, you, bow your head right now. <laughs> okay, you're going to repeat after me. You're going to say, God in heaven, I thank you that Jesus died just for me. I believe you raised him from the dead to give me a special place just with you. Jesus, Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior now. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for forgiving all my sins. I receive now. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the someone, family of God. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Someone has received Christ as their Lord and Savior. And like the, the Bible says that heaven is rejoicing. They rejoice over just one that comes into the kingdom. Amen. So just believing God that that prayer and, and your testimony and sharing, Minister Lois, is filling up heaven. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> so, and now you also are an instructor uh, at Spirit Food Christian Center's School of Biblical Instruction. Correct. Uh, equipping the next generation, right? Yes, yes, yes. Right. To go out into the mission field, I teach the missions course and I teach the sharing your faith course. And I have seen students graduate. Actually, after they take the class, they get on fire for winning the Lord. I, I have so many testimonies about how they just, the desire just increased so much. We do in the course, we go down to uh, one of the large, or I, I call it the hope area. <laughs> Some mm. people would call it skid row or where the homeless are. Mm. But we go down and we take a team and we walk up and down the streets and we tell them, we're out here sharing the love of Jesus. We'll wow. do a chapel service. And I mean, we're not, we're in a pretty, uh, dangerous area in fact to the point where one of our teams i used to always make sure that there's at least a man on each team so it's usually two ladies and one man and there's usually numerous teams of us but i remember not too long ago one of the teams they were ministering and right there in front of them someone got shot and so in fact i remember one day we were doing a bible study at this particular mission and a lady died right there in front of me. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you're going to see things, but you can't get alarmed. You stay focused on the fact that you're out there to win the loss. And Satan, we know, will try to disrupt that. But we, whatever happens, we pray and we keep moving. We, In fact, you've got to be mindful to use your authority. I remember... One of the teams, there was a situation where this man was being beaten by a group of people. And one of the members, she rose up. This is a young lady. She rose up. She used the authority she had in the name of Jesus. And she spoke to that situation. Do you know they stopped beating that man and they all left? <laughs> I see it. The, the, power, the power of God, the name that's above every name. That's right. That's right. <laughs> the kingdom suffers violent. The violent taken by force. Amen. 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 See, Amen. we gotta walk in our authority. We gotta. You gotta operate as whose you are. We're we're children of the Most High God. He's called El Elyon, the God who's more than enough. El Shaddai. That's who we serve. Praise God. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I tell you, I tell you, uh, Minister Lois, uh, this is so exciting. Uh, you know, when the Lord uh, inspired me to start Be Inspired Today, the podcast, you know, I just really had it in my heart that I just want people to be inspired. And I believe someone is definitely being inspired today. And one of the other things that I, I want to talk about is how you and Dwight, your husband, met. Um, this is something I, I, you know, just spending the time with you on on the street with, witnessing team and getting to know you over the last number of years, uh, Sandria and I. Uh, I know that you are just believing God for God to send you the man that would love you like Christ loved the church. And uh, tell us about how God sent your husband to you. Okay. I actually, I have some endearing names to him. I call him Honey Love, and I, say, I also call him the baby. I'll say to him, almost like in the third person, I'll say, good morning to the baby. And he calls me sweetie, and he'll say, good morning, sweetie. Or either he'll say it first. Well, my precious honey, we met in high school. 
way back way. <laughs> and he remembers me from the first day of school. He even told me, he says, you had a black and red dress on. Uh -oh. That, was, that uh -oh. was when you wore dresses to school, okay? And so I'm like, probably. I remember the dress because it was one of my favorite dresses. And in fact, he was telling someone this the other day. He says, he introduced himself and I said, hello, and kind of walked on. <laughs> and so moving, moving forward, many decades later, <laughs> I got a friend request on Facebook from him. And so right. when I, I looked at the picture <laughs> and I, I did tell the Lord, he said, well, he'd be nice, Lord. Oh, let me backtrack. That was in June. Back in June, this was in 2000, 2011, 2011, correct. June. My a minister friend of mine gave me a word of knowledge that mm. God was preparing my Boaz that he right. would accept me and all my little quirks and that I'd be preparing for a trip to Europe. That was in June. And wow. he friended me the end of June. And I was, I was preparing to go to Spain with some friends. And when he friended me, uh, all I told the Lord was that well, he'd be nice, Lord. And I just kind of dropped it. And I knew we had gone to high school together. So in August, they were supposed to have like, kind of like a little small high school reunion. And mm -hmm. so I thought, I said, hmm, I wonder if that guy is going to be there. Well, I ended up not going that Saturday. So I just kind of, you know, dismissed it. Then in November, he friended me on Facebook again. But this time, he asked me to be in his family tree. So I wrote back this time. I said, are we related? He said, not really, Lois. He said, uh, I just want to make closer contact with you. And I was like, okay. So he asked me, now we're just dialoguing back and forth on Facebook. He asked me what had I been doing and I told him, uh, you know, I taught school and, you know, was in ministry now. And then he told me what he had done. So then he, he wrote back and he said, I prefer talking to writing. Here's my number, you know, if, if you want to call me. And I think that was like on a Wednesday. Okay. And, and that Saturday, I was actually sitting at the computer doing a memorial program for my cousin who had passed. And as clear as I can hear you now, Minister, the Lord said, call that guy. Wow. So I, had to, I had to go get his number <laughs> you know, off my, my phone. And I called. And when I said, hello, oh, this was what, too, on his Facebook page, you know, as a lady, I looked to see was there any information about it. All he had was one picture. He still got this same picture on there. No information about the Lord or anything. So I didn't know where he was with the Lord. And but when I called him that Saturday, it was around three o'clock. And he says, oh, isn't this something? He said, I'm here picking up my earthly father and my heavenly father has you called. Wow. I, said, <laughs> yeah. I said, oh, so where do you fellowship? So he told me. And so we chatted about 45 minutes and he said, I'm getting ready to take my father to do a little shopping and get something to eat. Now, at that time, his dad was, let's see, dad was 98 at that time. No, was dad 98? Yeah, dad was 98. And I said, oh, okay. And so probably around seven o'clock that evening, he texted me, still with my dad, we'll call you shortly. And so I said, okay, give me an hour, getting ready to wash my hair. So he called me at nine o'clock that night. It was November 5th. And we talked from nine o'clock that night till 520 that morning. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a connection. 
Yeah, eighty percent of what we talked about was the Lord. Mm. And the only reason why he got off the phone then, he had to. He's a deacon at at the church we attend. He had to be at service, well, eight o'clock service. But the deacons go early and and you know pray and get everything you know all ready. And so, because it's a very 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 large church in Los Angeles, and um, and then he called me that Sunday night. And uh, he actually came to my cousin's service because my cousin was a, a member of the same church where he was. And nine months later, we went into a lifelong marriage covenant. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Praise and it's God. been nine years of growing in God's grace and growing in oneness with one another and just seeing the, God's hand on us. It's, it's really, it's been a blessing. We enjoy doing a lot of things together. In fact, I have, I had a, a pastor say the other day that Dwight is making it hard for some husbands because we do do a lot. I mean, we kind of put things on hold for the pandemic, but we enjoy traveling. We like museums. Uh, we like sporting events. We are involved in two marriage ministries because if you're married, you need to have a place where iron sharpens iron. Yes, indeed. You must. You must. <laughs> and marriage is spelled W O R K. I'm not trying to make it seem like it's utopia, <laughs> that everything is perfect. No, marriage is work, and you got to work at it. That's right. That's right. In fact, what I'd like for you to do, uh, we're going to do this interview in two different parts because you have so much to share. And I believe the audience wants to hear more from you, Minister Alois. Uh, I want to wrap up this first part by you speaking to some of the sisters out there who are single. Uh, they may be separated uh, from their spouse or whatever. Uh, speak to their hearts to encourage them to have, hold on to positive expectations as it relates to their desire to be married. Okay. Well, first and foremost, know that you are complete in the Lord first. Do not be hungry for a man. Mm. Jesus is your man, okay? And that's one thing I can say. I remember my niece telling me, this was long before my husband manifested, and she was taking a friend of ours from church this was a, a friend at Crenshaw, and she was taking her out to eat. And I said, because she was dating the lady's son, and I said, well, you don't ask me to go out to the movies and out to eat. And you know what she told me? She said, Auntie, you're not lonely. And that mm -hmm. was so profound to me, because what wow. she was seeing, she recognized the fact that I wasn't sitting around acting like, oh, I don't have anybody to take me anywhere. Oh, I, no. I used to travel even sometimes. I went to Europe by myself. You hear me? All I, right. I was never someone who act like if I didn't have a man, I couldn't go do things. And so, mm. and then you want to be about the father's business. I was out ministering. I was working in helps ministry. I think at one time I was working in five auxiliaries at Crenshaw. I was volunteering in the bookstore. I was a personal counselor. I was doing street witnessing. I was volunteering in the preschool. I mean, be about the father's business and then watch your confession. I was doing an event one time. By this time, I was at Zoe. And it was uh, a ministry, and they had asked me to facilitate the age group 35 and up. And so we were going to do lunch. So I went to get the lunch, and I had left a friend uh, or a minister that was ministering at that particular time in the session. I'd already finished what they had asked me to do in terms of ministry. And so I come back in the room with the lunches, and I hear two or three of the ladies talking about, there's no good men out there. Um, you know, we're not going to be able to get married. Cause, and I, I stood there for a couple of minutes and I listened. And this was August of 2011. 
And I, I literally, I said, what, wait, wait, whoa, hold up, hold up, hold up. I said, that confession is not true for me. I said, I only need one good man and God got mine. That was All right. Dwight and I started talking in November. And do you know, I know one lady in particular, I don't know about the other one, and she's still not married. And that was 10 years ago. Oh, Life boy. Are in the power of the tongue. So wow. you want God to send your Boaz, line yourself up with what God has called you to do, start winning the laws, start working in helps ministry, and see what, what God wants to tell you. Listen to the spirit of God. And don't be, you don't, we don't know it all, but he does. So, That's right. You know, and be encouraged. You only need one good one. God's got it. And That's don't right. the circumstances where they say, well, I'm not going to repeat that negative stuff what they say. But you, you heard what they say. But that's why the Bible says to guard what you hear and see. That's why I don't hardly watch the news. I may look at the weather, and that's you got to get that on the phone. You have to turn and do something. Don't listen to all that stuff that goes contrary to God's word. If God didn't tell you, don't listen to it. Amen. Amen. Well, Elois, you have definitely um, caused me to be inspired. And I know that the audience, whoever is listening uh, or who listens to this broadcast later is going to be truly inspired to hold on to positive expectations. We're going to come back and do um, part two in about a few days. And then we're going to talk more about what you do on the professional side and other areas that you want to cover. Okay. I want to say I want to say thank you and God bless you for being on Be Inspired Today. Audience, I hope that you will be blessed today. God bless you.